Hi everyone, once again welcome to this um, lecture, um, we are um, actually the course uh, is uh, Linux programming and scripting, um, we have been talking about uh, the Perl, Perl programming language and today is uh, Perl lecture 7. Um, we have made a lot of progress uh, with respect to Perl um, and um, I hope uh, you are now um, much more familiar with uh, the inner workings of Perl and um, are confident to do programming in Perl. Um, but mainly like I mean we looked at uh, several data structures uh, so far and we will continue our discussions still with the, the data structures in Perl. Um, then we will take it take upon the the controls. Um, um, while we are doing this itself, we are uh, learning somewhat um, some of the controls. Uh, so um, it is really good, actually. So um, um, let's uh, recap as to what we saw in the last class. Um, so. Um, in the last class we continued the discussions on array, we looked at some operations on array um, for example the reverse how to reverse the, the array essentially like the order of the array uh, using the reverse function, we also understood about the sort function to sort an array and then we also did some chopping uh, use the chop function to chop the last character of um, every element in the array. Then we also uh, looked at the um, the data from the array context as well as the scalar context and we noted the differences between um, how they are perceived, how they will be perceived um, if you are in the array context and what is the scalar context. Um, we also um, studied how to avoid array reference for scalars. Uh, and we studied principally like the three methods um, as to how to define a scalar um, when we use like uh, the array notation essentially. So a dollar variable followed by a square bracket is always an array that we know about, um, but then how to distinguish between a dollar and basically a, a scalar variable with just a, um, a square bracket. Uh, one method was we can define the, the variable name uh, under this um, the, the brackets or the double brackets essentially um, which is uh, actually shown here. Um, so um, this, uh, this notation. The other one is the concatenation notation where we can actually use a dot to actually uh, concatenate um, uh, variables essentially so that distinguishes um, completely like I mean between a scalar variable and a square bracket or the third option is this one where we can escape the, the square brackets using a backslash. Um, I think like I mean this is pretty much like I mean what we talked about uh, in the uh, last lecture um, with this I think um, we are ready to move on um, what I want to really uh, touch upon today is uh, the associative array um, or the hash array it is also known as the hash array and we will learn about that uh, today. Then we will also see like I mean some of the, the common challenges, um, the two main things in the Perl language um, if you do not know anything um, that you should really know about uh, is one of them is the hash array and how to use the hash array and then the second one is the regular expression. So we will see the regular expression in more detail um, in the coming classes I, I always promise you that uh, so we are not we are not yet complete with uh, the Perl programming language, so we will be looking at that, um, but uh, today we will talk about uh, the associative array and the various um, um, things associated with that, um, the functions and um, also like how to use them and we will also look at some simple application essentially how we can do it 
and I will also give you some problems to work on uh, to understand the concepts of the uh, hash array. So without um, delaying further let us look at what it is essentially. Um, so a hash array a um, couple of things one is it does not have a numerical index um, it uses the general data often strings as indexes or indices uh, the index itself is referred to as key in a hash array and then the corresponding element is uh, its value. So these two um, terms are very important because we will be um, looking at this from these two terms so I want you to remember this a hash array or an associative array is always referred to um, the indexes are referred to as key and then the corresponding element in the array is referred to as value. So um, the hash table basically like I mean so um, we use the hash table to um, implement an associative array. So hence these structures are known as uh, hashes in work. Um, hash is not probably like new to you like essentially like I mean hash is something um, which is um, unique in the sense that um, it has a very random access capabilities built in and um, essentially like I mean that is what we are striving to achieve when use the when using the associative array. So you do not have to do a linear search um, to get to a particular element instead you can directly go into that particular element using the hash function um, and so the other just uh, resulting from that is that the elements in the Perl hash do not have any natural ordering. So um, there is no relationship between each of the keys or each of the indexes in the array in, in the associative array whereas in a regular array as you know like the numerical values are uh, incremented one at a time uh, starting from 0 things like that basically like where we do not implicitly specify so uh, the, the index itself. Um, so here there is no definite relationship between the order of the keys and either the values of the keys or the order in which they are entered into the hash. So we just enter um, values and they can be attached anywhere within the uh, the array. Um, I will show you some examples uh, essentially as to how we add how we delete objects from the hash array. Um, Let us look at uh, a more um, 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 things essentially a uh, couple of more syntax uh, issues one is the the hash variables or the hash array the names begin with this character the percentage. If an array is assigned to a hash, the even index elements becomes the keys, and then the odd in index elements um, are the corresponding values. Um, so assigning an odd length array to a hash will cause an error. So these are some of the basic things that uh, you may want to um, um, look at. Meaning, like I mean, this is like I mean, by mistake, like I mean, you are instead of uh, percent you do not use that and instead you use the percentage and this is what will happen and then the curly braces are used uh, to subscript the hash. So um, if the percentage h is an hash then the element correspond to a 4 you can do it as um, dollar $h and then the 4 essentially. Um, so let us there is an example here. So here this is a percentage hash essentially this has three elements so this is what is this this is the key and this is the value. So again another key is Bob and that value Z V Z and then the percentage hash has a key of 50 and the value is John. So look at that right I mean so the key can be just a character a string or a numerical value same thing with the values essentially they can be just a number or 
uh, string or any other data structures. Um, so, so like I mean, so this is uh, this is the key thing. Basically, we will we'll see like I mean how we will use this uh, and how we will you know insert into this one. So let's look at uh, so um, in a nutshell, essentially again, uh, it's an unordered list, unordered set of pairs of keys and values, and each key needs to be associated with a value. Otherwise, it's an error. So um, we mentioned that basically it always starts with uh, a percentage. So here I'm declaring uh, my percentage hash. This is again a, a declaration essentially like I mean this is my term um, in fact Perl does not impose any kind of restriction you can use um, variables as you please you do not have to declare but it is a, it's a good idea and a good practice and a good style to actually declare your um, variables up front using the my notation um, again uh, unlike uh, other programming languages you don't have to specify whether it's an integer, whether it's a string, whether it's a character, those kind of variables. You can just simply say like my and then the particular variable name. So here the initialization essentially like I mean this is one way to initialize. So basically assign the key um, a to um, five, the value five. And then um, key Bob to value ZZZ, and then key 50 to value John. So so far it's fairly easy declaring the variable, and then this key assigning it. Now how do we access it? So we can do like as I mentioned, like in the curly braces here. So within the curly braces, we specify the key. So in order to access um, that particular value, so it is a print dollar hash fifty that gives you jump. And if you want to reset this hash table, essentially, like I mean, you just remove all these things, so all the key value pairs, and simply do this, and then that will um, reset that. So now let's look at how do we modify. What happens when we say hash Bob is AAA? So now what happens to this one? The value simply change. So from ZVV it changes to AAA. Now if you want to add a new new um, key value pair, we just simply specify hash and then that particular um, key with what the value is, and then it just gets added. So basically now the hash array becomes um, the number of elements become four and then the 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 value that you've mentioned is getting inserted. Please note that actually there is no order here I'm inserting at the end it can be anywhere in the middle or wherever it is basically it just gets added to this hash array that's how you should look at it um, because there is no order that is associated with it. So you cannot say like hash and and then you get this one. Essentially, like I mean, you need to access it using the key and then you get the value. So again, there is no order um, in this uh, assignment. The way that uh, certain key, whether it exists, is to use this function called exists. So we can say like I mean. Um, um, this actually like is actually doing two things one is it exists this essentially like I mean it is actually finding whether there is a value that exists corresponding to this key essentially which is kind of testing whether there is a key that is existing in there. Now we can also do a delete essentially like I mean that is essentially just use the delete function. And then we specify the um, particular key value pair. The key value pair is denoted as just the array followed by the the keys essentially. Like so, the the key and the value 
both get deleted in this case. So, for example, here we say the 50 which is associated with 50 John. So, once we execute this, both of them get deleted. So, it is not just it is removing the 50 or it is removing just the John, it is removing both the key and the value from that array. So now um, so far we have learned um, the three different data types essentially the variable types essentially one is the scalar, um, scalar could be a number or a string, uh, the array data type which is essentially like a string of uh, objects essentially like so the array has a value of uh, 0 which is the first one and then the last one is whatever the the nth array um, whereas um, for a hash essentially hash has just a uh, key value pair so notice that actually like I mean here the elements are all like joined together because this starts from 0 1 2 3 and 4 etc whereas here there is no uh, any order here essentially only connection is this element is connected to this, this element is connected to this, this element is connected to this, that is all. So, you, you can think of hash array as a, a two, two dimensional arrays, um, which is how we can uh, make use of it in real world applications. Um, and then um, also, like I mean, it is uh, you can also call it as a sparse array. Um, so, this is again uh, useful. Say for example, like I mean, you have a coordinate system where a point is denoted by x, y, and then you have given like I mean, say like three points. To identify these points, you can actually build a hash array where you can say like I mean, um, percentage points, and then you can say like percentage points. And then the key can be just x, and that corresponds to, or to say like this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2, and this is x3, y3. I can just simply note as x1 to y1, x2 to y2, x3. Now, if I access like dollar points, x one, this will get me the y one. So now you can see that actually, like I can preserve both x one and y one, and the points that are relevant for me, I can store it within that. So this is one way to actually store like a two dimensional array piece um, with the relevance and then now I can do any kind of operations between them I know the x1 I know y1 I can get to x1 from y1 um, there is an interesting problem that I, I will pose uh, later on uh, where I want you to get x1 given what is the y1 so for that I will give you like more functions essentially so let us look at some more functions to work with uh, hash arrays. So here um, another practical example is um, essentially um, um, a phone book uh, we can associate uh, various users with their phone numbers and put them in a hash array and then when we say like phone book for a given user it prints uh, their uh, numbers. Uh, this is pretty much what we saw basically like the value how we change the hash array the values can be assigned to hash reference to insert a new key value relation or change the, the value related to the key uh, these two we saw already like in our examples um, a key value relation can be removed um, with the delete operator this is something that we saw already uh, and then this is another way to delete all the contents of the hash array we know that one, one other method is that percentage hash equal to just this will um, get rid of everything 
the other operator is basically like under percentage hash this also will just remove all the contents from the hash and then the exit operator this is something that we saw basically like I mean if, uh, if there is any key is related to any value in the hash um, and then um, if you just do this basically like I mean uh, just check um, the dollar rate something it does not work since the related value can be empty string or 0 both of which is contained by the boolean false. So we do not want to just uh, see like um, like if this kind of a thing dollar edge something. If we specify this kind of a check essentially like I mean if the something is actually has a zero. It will still term as a boolean false. So I think there's a typo here. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it should be boolean false. So this is what this means essentially. So um, don't do this. Instead, use the exist uh, function to check whether it really exists or not. And exist function, if it is a zero, uh, it still returns a true value. And only like it returns a false only. Uh, such object does not exist in the hash array and then the hash variable embedded in a string is not interpolated this is another um, key um, concept um, however that a reference to the hash element is interpolated um, so if you are embedding as, um, a variable inside a string you cannot interpolate um, um, or hash variable that is embedded in the string cannot be interpolated. Um, so just uh, remember that when you are using hash. So now we want to iterate through the hash um, actually there are two functions again uh, to do this um, the first one is the keys operator essentially so um, this keys operator will iterate through all the keys the other one we will learn a little bit uh, later uh, then also the sort operator is another one which uh, can also be applied to iterate through the keys in order. So let us see like how we can use it so um, in order to get the list of all the keys in the hash we can simply put keys percentage hash. And this returns all the keys, and we just store it into an array. Yeah. So the array is essentially like hash keys is a bob fifty. So this is hash keys zero. This is one. This is two. So you can actually like in fact uh, print out these values, and then be the same. Basically. So this is. Uh, uh, to get the, the keys so the other one that I mentioned is uh, using the values uh, function um, again the values actually captures all this side of the equation so keys are all going into here values are all going into here so what does values look like so um, So again it is the same thing basically so as well as 0 is this one and then this is 1 and this is 2. So here is um, uh, a phone book example um, this we started actually so um, here we, we basically have we are declaring this uh, hash array called phone numbers um, initially we are initializing it to a null and then we declare a variable called number and um, here we also like I mean have a name essentially 
and then uh, we basically query the uh, the name and the number. So um, we start this while loop here, uh, start here and ends here, and then basically if it is not equal to end, end is the mnemonic for um, um, ending the, the program or ending this loop. So if it is not equal to end, um, then what we say is basically like enter a name that will be added to the phone book. We ask this uh, basically, and then um, we capture the the standard in whatever we input into the name. We chomp the last character, which is the new line, essentially, and then we compare the name against end. If they are equal, then we skip the whole thing and then go to the beginning of the loop. So it tests this condition, and since it is an end, it will end the the loop itself. But if it is not, then we will go forward. Then we ask to enter the phone number, and then we capture the number in this number variable, which we declared earlier. Again, we chomp the number, and then we basically just add that into the uh, hash array that we declared the phone numbers with the key as the name and number as the value. So this is the one that uh, we ask for a name and then the print the number uh, corresponding to that name. So this this program is after we build this hash array in this uh, um, slide. So once we build the hash array, now what do we do? So here we again initialize the name. Again we ask um, whether the name is n. If it is not end, then we go into the program and we basically like ask to enter the name. Um, the name we just get it from the standard end, and we um, again do the chop operation to remove the last character, which is the new line here. So um, once we have the name, then we look for whether that exists in the um, um, in our phone numbers uh, hash array. If it exists, then we just print out this line. So look here. Basically, this is the key, and here we use the same key to um, check what the value is. So this whole thing, this prints out the value. And then again, if the name is uh, we type that end at this point, it just goes back to the beginning. But then, if it is not end and if it, the name is not found, which is this exists returns a false value or a zero, then it goes all the way to this uh, else condition, and then we just print out saying that the name is not found. Here you can uh, do some more additional tricks um, and basically maybe you can also say that a hey, if it is not found do you want to add and then if the if the user says yes then you again go into just um, updating The hash array, and I think like you can easily update the hash array by just using this numbers dollar name equal to dollar number. Okay, so. If you add this essentially like I mean you can make this program a complete program where if you give a name it looks into its dictionary see whether it sees whether that name has a matching number then it prints out the number 
if it does not have the match then it prompts you for um, entering a number so that it can add for that particular person or that particular name what the number is corresponding number is okay um, there are some um, additional concepts um, in the hash um, essentially like I mean one of them is uh, this uh, predefined hashes um, so the percentage env variable is defined to be a key value pair defined in the environment of the running Perl process um, these dollar these percentage env variables are uh, inherited from the runtime environment um, so again in the windows con uh, context actually like we can actually set up um, uh, through the command line uh, set command essentially like so um, when we do like set then uh, we can just say like um, so we say set and then variable name equal to value. in um, so this is um, essentially like I mean so this is the command line set and set or even like in in the unix bond shell um, we can do the simple assignment similar to this we can also do like set env and then um, set env and then the variable is value so the simple assignment will actually accept these things and then once it is done the per, the percentage env has these um, key value association already so then it uses that to determine how the operating system to behave uh, so now let me give you like a small quiz essentially um, try to uh, define an hash array with the following data. Um, here, actually, it's very simple. Essentially, so um, it's basically like all of them are just um, uh, strings, and this side is all numeric. It could be like I mean, mix and match also. And now you sort the array based on the keys. Try to sort the array based on the values, and then print both the results and see like what uh, what you get. We will discuss this uh, in the next lecture as to what uh, you should be seeing. Um, so now um, we come to the the next uh, set of topics essentially. Um, one is like I mean, how do we reference um, um, the? Um, I mean, what what is the concept of a scalar variable, and what is um, how is it represented in the memory? As you know, like I mean, uh, every uh, variable is also has a reference uh, to that variable. Um, in C language, we call it as uh, an address, and then um, essentially, like I mean, every variable you can think of it as a variable is um, is a memory location location in the main memory to which a value will be stored and then there is an address to it which will actually is the reference to that variable. So even in Perl we can actually give references to the, 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 the variables essentially, um, essentially the reference is a scalar value given to the given the giving the address of uh, another value in the memory so whatever the address of this particular location will be the reference and this is uh, a scalar value the reference um, to existing variable is created by using the backslash operator so that is uh, this one so in the string context we use the backslash often to escape um, the the special characters 
but in um, variable context when we use the backslash we actually create a reference to that particular uh, variable or calling its address of that variable. And then reference to literal structures can, can be created, so if you want to create a reference to a list we can create by enclosing the list in a square bracket. So this is what we are, we are doing it basically um, by when we write a um, array, so here a dollar array dollar a is 1, 2, 3, 4 means when we refer when we use the dollar a that refers to this whole um, list which is 1, 2, 3, 4 and then we use the curly braces essentially like I mean to um, uh, denote um, the hash array again we saw that this is how we create the hash array essentially what we are saying is like I mean okay this is the hash and we create a reference for it by enclosing within the um, curly braces again a lot of these concepts essentially um, all revolves around essentially like I mean there is one way of understanding and but this is the, the next way to understand the same thing slightly differently. Um, so the Assignment is to a scalar variable since the literal value is a reference. So uh, here we don't use any of those uh, percentage h notation or at a. These are all now scalar values. So are these the same? Like I mean, are at a equal to dollar a and percentage h? Equal to dollar h. What do you think? Are they equal? Are they the same? And the answer is not because now these are scalar variables. So what do they actually contain? Um, this is something that uh, you can you can actually like do this experiment. Um, do these assignments and print dollar a and dollar H and let us talk about that in the next class as to um, next lecture as to what we will see if you do this uh, simple print, uh, but it will be interesting to see like I mean what we get, um, so for a scalar value itself for a scalar um, um, variable we know that actually like we can refer, uh, refer to that one by using the backslash what I mean is here this is scalar um, like a dollar x then you can say that basically like dollar ref equal to backslash dollar x so now what is dollar ref dollar a and dollar h um, or if we have these as our variables how do we get back to these arrays and hashes and um, the scalar variables. This one back. So um, this process, basically, by which we can convert a, a reference back to the the variable, the original variable, that's known as the dereferencing. Okay. So um, to access a value pointed by a reference, the programmer must explicitly dereference the reference. So if we are given only the reference we can dereference uh, by using uh, two dollar signs, so a dollar dollar D in this case is same as dollar A because dollar B is actually backslash dollar. I do not know whether it, it makes sense but um, this is the way to understand that, so here um, to um, in order to reference uh, an array the arrow sign can be used uh, between the reference and the index 
uh, to indicate the reference. So um, we can one thing that we can do is like I mean when the dollar R is um, at list, then um, dollar dollar R will bring back the list, and then if you say like number three, then that is the index three of the list. We can also simply use a dollar R and then arrow. In square brackets, and this is the same as this. But if you just say like dollar R three, this is not the same as any of this, this, or even this. The reason is dollar R brackets 3 is actually the the third element or actually in this case the fourth element of another array named at R and that is completely related from this one which is actually the at list so see the difference actually here it is at R and here it is at list so since these two are different Essentially, like I mean, this is not the same as this. So don't use this for this. Um, if you want to use the the list uh, third element with the reference, then use this or this. And if you want to refer the the third element or the fourth element, index three of uh, array R, then use this. So I think um, these are some of the powerful concepts um, in the Perl language. In Perl language, essentially, like I mean, that um, um, you want to um, work more with uh, in order to understand this. Um, the concepts are fairly simple, but um, they are very powerful, and pretty much uh, um, ninety percent of the programs themselves use these concepts extensively, and. Um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, you can get all these things. Um, number one thing is uh, we introduced this uh, hash array as a, a new concept of um, um, an array. Um, the key difference between a hash array and a regular array is um, um, hash array is an unordered set of um, key value pairs. So these key value pairs can have any association or can have some relationship or it can completely be um, different and the Perl treats um, either case as the same basically like I mean it's as if like um, there, are, there is no association between uh, any of the keys or any of the values. So the only association that it uh, knows about is the association between a particular key and a particular value. Um, all the others are completely all the other bits are completely off. Um, and then uh, we denote the hash variable um, with the percentage um, basically in the front. Um, we can initialize a hash array using uh, just a simple notation. Um, we can also like make it uh, empty by using undef or just the the parenthesis without any. Um, um, key value pairs inside. We can access by the key essentially. So here we use a scalar hash with a particular um, key value in the curly braces in order to access that. Uh, so this is different from other way uh, like uh, the other things that we will learn. We learned uh, uh, later on, uh, which I will also recap on that uh, front. Um, in order to add uh, an uh, element it is very uh, so initially like we let us do a modification is basically we just modify the 
you just put a new um, value for a given um, uh, key and then that just modifies uh, the, the value um, so essentially it just replaces the that particular value with the new value um, and then if you want to actually add, add it's again very simple basically like add with the new key and then with the value and then the value just uh, that particular key value then uh, we always uh, use the exists Function to um, find if a particular key value pair exists in the hash array. Um, we cannot just uh, do if uh, that particular key value pair or hash of the key to see whether that one particularly exists because if the element's value is uh, 0, that particular um, logical test will return a false value. So the exists. Uh, um, function is the is the surest way to ensure that um, that particular key value array. Then we can delete a particular uh, key value pair by using the delete function. And to use the delete function, we have to specify the hash and um, the particular key. And please also note that um, we need to specify the parentheses here. Um, whereas in for exists, we don't need to do that. And then we also saw this difference between the scalar, um, the array, and the hash. Essentially, like I mean, scalar could be a number or a string. Uh, the string is enclosed within the um, the double quotes or the single quote. Either one is uh, legal syntax, and we also know that actually in the single quote only like some backslash, and uh, there's only one other uh, specific uh, uh, character that will be getting evaluated. All the others are ignored. Uh, whereas uh, in a string that is uh, enclosed within uh, uh, double quotes, even it can interpolate. Uh, Variables within that string, and then you can return the values. So, uh, so that those things we already saw this um, the differences and how we uh, can do all these things. Uh, then the other uh, data structure that we learned was uh, array. The array data structure has um, starts with the at sign or an ampersand sign, and then the first element is always um, or the the first element is always array is zero. So it's uh, the index of zero, then zero, and then the index just progressively goes up. Whereas in hash, actually there is nothing; just a hash um, with a key is what is uh, denoted in that. Um, we saw some examples. Uh, this is the phone book. We also saw the example to how to denote points on a. Uh, uh, Plain essentially uh, with x1, y1. How do we denote it as uh, hash arrays and how to operate on them? Um, this is like critical. This is key when you actually do like DLSA applications like uh, placement or routing, and we want to denote from one point to another point, and just using Perl to write uh, certain um, routines. This is very useful. Then we also see uh, saw how to access the um, the hash um, array, access various elements. Uh, so if you want to just access all the, the keys, we just use the keys function. Um, we can also do like a sort on the keys essentially. So the sort function is also like um, useful. Then um, we also saw like. Uh, The values function essentially like values uh, function um, gives all the values of the array uh, here essentially like we saw these, these things. Um, then we actually saw like I mean how the program is being written. So the program has like two parts. One is uh, where we populate the hash function, and then the other one is where we 
get the name and uh, display what the phone number is actually. Um, one way is essentially like we can combine these two these two sections into one uh, where it asks for a name and um, if the name exists it returns the value if the name does not exist it asks for the phone number and then populates the array and then progressively it can go build the entire array and that is what is shown here and um, actually like I mean this could be a good exercise for trying um, to create a phone book where um, it not only just uh, gives you the number but if it is not present in its uh, database it adds that and then finally it gives you all the entries of the, the uh, phone book. And then we also studied about the predefined hashes uh, essentially and then how to set them. Um, then the two main things that we talked about was uh, referencing a scalar and also a dereferencing scalar. The referencing a scalar value is to reference its address in the memory. memory. Um, so the way to do it is by using the backlash operator. Um, for the lists, we simply use um, the the square brackets, um, and then for a hash. We simply use a curly braces to uh, create a reference, and all these references we noted were created as scalars and not as those arrays um, or the hashes themselves. So these are all like no nos that we saw. Uh, only like first, uh, the dollar is allowed, and uh, the other one is now that once we gotten the references to these um, variables how do we re de reference them or get back the original array or original uh, lists or original um, hash functions uh, how do we get back to that and for that uh, we can use the extra dollar sign essentially is like so dollar dollar being um, and then um, for an array actually we use the uh, um, Dash and then the uh, greater than sign, which actually is an arrow sign. Basically, this arrow sign is made out of dash and then uh, greater than sign. Uh, and then we saw basically, like I mean, if uh, we have a list, uh, and then if dollar dollar r uh, is assigned to that list, essentially, like all it's the reference to that list. Dollar dollar r three is one way to access the fourth element of the array. And uh, the other way is the dollar r, and then the uh, uh, arrow to uh, the element three to access the element. Uh, but if we do just uh, r three, that's incorrect because that's not the same as the previous two. And uh, dollar r three is typically the fourth element of the uh, array, um, and um, So um, that pretty much uh, concludes this lecture um, we will take it up in the next uh, class from this point um, and meanwhile please uh, try to do the, the small exercise that I have assigned to you uh, and also think about how do we um, access based on just the keys and how do we access the access based on the values. And how do we reverse uh, the keys and the values? So I guess um, thank you very much uh, for um, attending this lecture. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.